Next job is going to be changing the cables in this door. So this is the state that I bought it in. I've done a few videos on changing window cables. So I'll try and keep it a little briefer this time. Came with a cable kit and with it all dismantled. So we've got to work out how it all goes back together again. Okay, so this is the window mechanism. If you haven't taken it out of the car yet, you have to undo two bolts on each strut. So there's one there and one over that far end. The motor similarly comes out held on by some bolts. Uh, you have to take the motor, uh, motor apart to get to the wires. And that is held together by four uh, Torx T25 screws. So it's quite daunting working out where all the cables go. Because uh, if you get a kit, and this came with a kit, um, there are, well, we've got three different length cables and uh, it takes a bit of working out where everything goes. Uh, somebody must have had a previous go at this because one of these was actually fitted upside down. That's the way that it goes. Uh, and it's fairly obvious how they go on because there's those slots there which only go onto the rail one way. Uh, so the difficult thing to work out is... Uh, which of these fittings go on which part? So basically the small bits, these, go onto the rails, like so. And these longer bits go into the motor. And it comes with some separate springs, that's removable. So you have to put the big spring on. And ultimately, that will go into that hole there. And this short one will go into uh, the hole down there. The cables attach onto the uh, bars. Uh, in this sort of manner. So there's another spring in here on this kit. They do vary a little bit by kit and uh, slight variations with age and model of car and so on. Um, basically, it's very similar on MG Rover and Freelanders and lots and lots of other cars. I think VW first started using cables. Um, but again, that takes a bit of working out, but that's how they go together. Same the other side. Just check that. There we go. If you're wondering how they all attach, and uh, so it's worth laying out in this rough configuration first. And what I would do is uh, when we start pulling the cables together, put the cable over this outer section of the spool, probably at least in a couple of places. That relieves a bit of tension and um, then makes getting the cable into the motor and tension a bit easier. Then what you do is turn this round and this outer section will then force the cable into the um, the proper position on the uh, the outside of that uh, circular pulley. Right now we've got the rough layout of the cables. Uh, we have to take on the little bit tricky task of assembling the motor and spooling it up. So we have to take the motor spool off. Might need a little screwdriver just to persuade it out. And uh, it doesn't matter too much uh, on the position of, of this, um, but I need to make sure the correct cable goes in the correct hole. There's a little peg here that uh, only fits in that position, just holds the cable uh, tight against the drum. Can fit that later because it only falls out otherwise. So knowing that the peg goes in there, this small cable has to come up to this slot here. And if the wheel is fitted on this way, then we know this cable goes in this slot because that's the only slot that's facing and lined up for that way. And because that fits in at the top, we know that's got to wind around from the top going down. It doesn't matter how many turns we do because... Uh, or where we put it in because we just adjust the position of the window um, actuator parts uh, for a different position and yeah, quite difficult to uh, keep it in the right slot in fact I'm going to take that out do the other one first so we know how that's meant to go let's see if we can actually hold it there for a minute then the other one, which is this one here, that has to come in this one and keep the spring on. 
That has to go in the other slot for it underneath. See that? It's the only place left where it'll fit. Just wiggle it so it goes flat. And then this one winds on from the bottom. And now we have to wind these cables on enough. Give me a bit more slack. So the spool, this wheel, is full up with cable. All right, that will do, I think, for that one. Let's put this one in first then. I think just put it in like that. And then uh, hopefully, I'll just put these uh, cables on the outer part of the spool to start with. Give me a little bit of tension, but not too much. And then, let's see if we can wind this top one. It may be the wheel mostly in place. If we get a tiny little screwdriver, we can just poke it down into second slot down. It's quite a tight gap around the spool, so hopefully that'll hold it in place. Nearly. It's actually we got moved up, but hopefully it's better. There we go, that one goes up that one. And then I'll just put the plunger in to assist in holding that. That one there. Tighten that up a little bit. This is when it's going to start to get tight. So spring there. This one in here. Oh, in fact, is it that one? Let's just check how that motor will go. I think I think that's right. Okay, the cable will be coming down here. So I think it bends up from that one. Let's get that spool over. Right, uh, so we've got a little bit of tension. And uh, not too much. That cable is not on that spool over there, but I think, yeah, it looks like I've got enough tension, I think, to hold the cable in place. It may not be quite in the right slots. Let's just persuade that up a little bit. And it'd be nice if it started off in the right slots. Cables look to be in all the right places. We've got the cables just on the end part of the spools. And that one is not on at all. So let's put that one on as well. There we go. Right. Check everything is coming into place. These are starting to compress. And so now we will refit, keeping these cables in place, uh, refit the motor onto its plate. Before we do that, grease everything up nicely. Lithium grease, grease. I've used molybdenum and grease in the past. Uh, sometimes a bit of oil on the cable is a good idea. I might do that um, towards the end, just basically to stop it rusting. Because quite often these cables um, fail because they rust. So I'll put some uh, grease down these rails to aid the window going up and down when we uh, finish towards the end. Maybe that's a bit more successful. Pull the motor into place. Come on. I think that's about it. A little bit of plastic broke off when it was being taken apart. Doesn't matter too much because it's just the core of the white piece. Uh, but it did have to drill a hole for a new screw to go in. Right, that's that in. Let's just do up some screws to hold it in place. Oh, 
nice and tight. Just got a bit a positive drive type screw in that one. I need to get a proper bit for it really, but that'll do for now. Not that essential that uh, this one is in place. And to give it some grip. And then to use one of these little spring clip things on the other side. Nice to do. That should be fine, it doesn't protrude too much. If it does, just cut the end off it. All right, motor is now all good. And all we've got to do now is tension up these uh, pulleys. So you can see cables on the outer bit. What we've got to do is uh, get a large screwdriver or something. So something will fit in that slot. And then turn it round until it pushes the cable onto the main reel, like that. And of course the last one's going to be the most difficult because that's going to be under the most tension. Probably some special tool for doing this. As I did, uh, once I was doing this, did break off a piece of plastic. The screwdriver seems to work reasonably. Jesus. These are held in place by the tension and eventually they'll be attached to the glass, of course. This one. Last one, it's this one here. See the springs on the motor are starting to compress as the tension is going up. Some long nose pliers stuck in those two holes. Probably get a bit more grip. There we go. Right, so we're all tensioned up and uh, ready to put in the car. So this is what clamps the window, um, just to bolt each end. Make sure the window's in the right position before you do them up. You might need a little bit of adjustment. And that's it. Cable replaced. All we've got to do is refit it and test it out. Uh, if you want to know stuff about fixing the motor, uh, see my other video on fixing electric windows, where I stripped the motor apart and cleaned it all up, de-rushed it, and uh, freed up some of the nylon gears. But I didn't have to do that this time. I tested it by just plugging it in here and uh, turning on the ignition, uh, twisting the switch and make sure the motor ran backwards and forwards. Let's grease the rails and put some oil on the cable and then we'll refit it. Okay, that's it in and working. Uh, time to own up to one mistake. This cable here, so on the bottom of the other rail that doesn't hold the motor, this cable actually should go in this top slot here and not the side. Uh, it's the same mistake that I've seen on uh, somebody else's videos, uh, popular ones that are on YouTube. Uh, so I made the mistake of doing the same thing. And as a result of that, this is not quite pulled low enough. So that when the window goes down, it still sticks up a little bit. So gotta try and correct that. Hopefully you'll learn from my mistake. And that's that adjusted a little bit better. Flat enough just about see it and everything's bolted together new rivet there and of course test it before you put everything back together again that works fine uh, so check while the window's going up and down that these cables are out the way of the window uh, so there's a little um, holding piece of plastic for this cable that one is just about enough out of the way doesn't seem to be any holders for that one but i don't think that's really a problem and uh yeah job done so good luck with yours and lastly a quick note on door card disassembly or assembly just to point out how they're mounted you don't need to remove the switch panel because that, that is just held in on uh, clips if you want to remove it but that can stay in place just unplug the plugs the surround for the door handle has to come off that's held in place with one screw through that position there, like a Phillips type screw. Um, so there are three bolts, screw threaded, screw headed, uh, I think Phillips or Posi type one head bolts. Three bolts for the handle. The plastic handle itself can stay in place. And there are four screws around the bottom of the door. One, two, uh, three, 
and a thought. Uh, there's one fairly big uh, screw type bolt that goes in there with a plastic cap on the top. And the rest of them, that's it for screws and bolts. And the rest of it's held together with these little clips, which is just push in, pull out type clips. You, you'll probably find that a few will come detached. Some will be left in the door. You want to move them back onto the door card before assembling. Uh, you might be missing a few. This is uh, the door card part of it that has this sort of cap. You can move them around to distribute them evenly for a good attachment. It's probably a good idea. Or you can get some new clips. Uh, we're only missing one on this card, so it's not much of a problem. Uh, so to remove the card, after you've undone all the screws, bolts, just give it a sharp pull and uh, that should come off. Also worth checking your speakers are working properly. Uh, on this car, I don't know whether they liked listening to very loud music, but all of the speakers have blown up. The two front ones I've changed for these Vibe ones, which uh, seem reasonable, the right sort of size. Near enough. The screw holes differ slightly different positions, so it cuts some old bits of plastic off the old speaker. Less than £15 from Halfords, and similarly online. A six and a half inch speakers, not too bad quality. Sometimes the actual connector itself oxidizes up as well. So I cut the wires off, soldered them onto the new wire connections for these speakers. So to test whether your old speaker is any good or not, get a multimeter, measure across the two terminals of the speaker, it should be about four ohms. Buying multimeter is pretty cheap uh, online for, I don't know, 10 quid or something. When reassembling, don't forget to get your uh, door opening knob through the hole and then just give it a firm push or punch to get it to fit onto the door connectors and then obviously drop all the screws. That bit of foam block I believe goes in there, stops the cable rattling around with the music. If you did remove the switch panel, uh, you can see how they're held in place, just a little clip either side so they just pull out and push back in again. And when you re-plug in, make sure these plugs are the right way round because they uh, can go in any um, of the sockets. And if you get it wrong, the window switch will then operate the door lock. So just swap them over. That's the case. It just pushes into place. This uh, handle cover. Again, you can see it's just got a little clip there, a little clip there. So to remove, you have to get a little screwdriver underneath. Give it a sharp pull off either side and uh, push it back on again in the same way. These front ha handles are the same as the back ones on the five door, so uh, if you do want to swap them over, because they do wear eventually, after about 20 years, the driver's side has got a bit of wear on it. And also make sure you fit them the right way up. They do look similar, but uh, this edge is longer on the bottom, so it goes that way around. And that should just push into place. Like so there we go, it's held firmly in place when it's finally fitted. Uh, you can respray these if you want to as well, cup of nicks on it, not too bad. The other little thing that's held in or removed uh, by uh, screwdrivers, held in by little clips. So again, you just have to prise that off. And underneath is the one of the screws that holds the door card on. Refitting is a lot easier. And that is it, all fitted. So onto the other side, which is actually where the window cable come from, the driver's side. See, I refitted a condensation or noise barrier, probably axes both. On the other side, it was a sort of foam type material, quite similar to this I had in the garage, which is the underlay for laminate flooring. Uh, so I'll just take that over. Since the manufacturers decided to fit it, I thought it must be there for a reason, so I'll do the same. And uh, just cloth taped it, gaff taped it on. Its absence could be one of the reasons why the speakers had rusted out. It's also a good opportunity to clean up the door card. So a bit of water, toothbrush. It's a good way of getting into all that little ingrained stuff. And uh, wipe it off with a cloth afterwards. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.